What's up guys, Commonwealth Snow here, and today I want to talk to you about my personal choice for the top three beginner Linux distributions and why they wouldn't and why they don't really matter as much as you would think they do. So let's get into it. Now the third best Linux distribution for beginners in my personal opinion would be Pop OS. Now I chose Pop OS for a couple of reasons. Um, the first one being the dedicated team of developers that support the system. Of course, as we all know, System76 are the main developers behind Pop OS that are there to keep the support going for the system and to maintain it, which is there to provide that extra bit of stability that users may want. Now my second choice, now my second point on Pop OS would be the unique desktop environment that System76 have implemented into it. It's a desktop environment that is based off of GNOME, however, is based off of GNOME and has the same feel as GNOME, but also introduces a few unique utilities. For example, the tiling window-esque manager type of thing that they have going on in there can be very, very useful for a workflow and getting into the zone of things. I also have a lot of personal experience using Pop! OS as a daily driver, as it was the first Linux distribution I actually used as a daily driver. So I think I do have quite a bit of personal experience, and that's why I'm choosing Pop! OS as the third best Linux distribution Linux distribution for beginners. Now, my second choice for the best Linux distribution would be Linux Mint. I think this one speaks for itself in a lot of ways. Linux Mint is quite often, more, more often than not actually, the Linux distribution people know about and would choose to use as a daily driver. It is based off of Ubuntu, which itself is based off of Debian, uh, so that provides you with the APT package manager, giving you access to all of the Debian packages, uh, as well as having that known Debian stability, while also having the choice of choosing multiple different desktop environments. Linux Mint has a lot of documentation for pretty much anything you'd want to do, as it has been around for quite some time, and many, many of its features. It's built on top of Ubuntu, which, which itself has a lot of documentation about basically everything to do with the operating system. Now, my personal opinion for the best beginner Linux distribution that you should daily drive would be Debian. Now, let me explain. Debian is the sort of grandfather for all of the major Linux distributions that people would often associate with being beginner friendly. For example, the previous two distributions I've just, men I've just mentioned, uh, being Linux Mint and Pop! OS, are both based off of, to an extent, Debian. Ubuntu itself is based off of Debian, and Ubuntu would be um, one of the Linux distributions people would associate with a Linux beginner, but in my personal opinion, I don't think Ubuntu makes the cut because of the lack of upfront choices it gives to the user. It locks you into that GNOME desktop environment and I don't think that can be helpful for many people who are wanting to go onto Linux. For example, people who are coming from the Windows operating system onto GNU slash Linux, locking them into that one um, Windows window manager, that, that desktop environment, it gives it more of a Windows feel than a Linux feel, you know? It doesn't give you that freedom of choice, which I think Linux should come with, which is why I've chosen Debian as the number one. It gives you that choice. It's a base system that you build up on. It teaches you about the Linux ethos and the Linux system, while also not being too difficult, like installing, a, like installing an Arch Linux distribution. Now, some honorable mentions for being some of the best beginner Linux distributions, in my mind, would be... Uh, Fedora, Manjaro, maybe Ubuntu, but like I've said, I, don't, I just don't really like Ubuntu. Um, I didn't put Manjaro or Fedora in this for the following reasons. Uh, number one, Manjaro is based off of Arch, which can prove to be stable, but can also prove to be a bit more easy to break if you're not 100% sure on what you're doing. I mean, that can, that can be said for all these Linux distributions I've mentioned, but... I think Arch Linux goes especially, um, and I didn't choose Fedora because I am actually not too 
knowledgeable on Fedora. I've never actually used it day to day. I don't think I've even installed it in a virtual machine. So, but I have heard good things about Fedora. So maybe if this was like a top four Linux distributions, maybe Fedora would be in it. But um, I've heard many good things about Fedora, so it could be one that you should consider and look into. Now, all of these that I've mentioned, as well as the honourable mentions, are all very easy to install. They all come with graphical installers, making it easy for new people, new Linux users to get used to. And both Linux Mint and Debian give you that choice of what desktop environment you want to install. Debian especially, uh, it comes with it comes with one ISO, one type of ISO, and within that you have the choice to install many, many different desktop environments. Uh, whereas with Linux Mint you have the choice between a couple different ISOs that come bundled with different desktop environments and Pop OS doesn't come with the choice between desktop environments but that I think that's just because they have developed their own and they want to push that onto the user it is based off of GNOME and that's why it's third place now I want to talk about why I, th I personally think none of these really matter if you're wanting to hop over to using Linux as a daily driver the first reason being all of these different Linux distributions, or sorry, many, many different Linux distributions that people often associate with daily driving are, basic, are based off of two different Linux distributions. The first one being Debian and the second one being Arch. For example, Manjaro is based off of Arch, Garuda Linux is based off of Arch, and different distributions like Linux Mint, Ubuntu, Kubuntu, they're all based off of Ubuntu, which itself is based off of Debian. So I really think your choice can be narrowed down into two. You see a lot of lin uh, new Linux users are can often get overwhelmed with the amount of choice they have between the different distributions, and I think this shouldn't be an issue because if you look if you look into it, you realize you only really have two choices: Debian or Arch Linux. And if you're choosing Linux to daily drive as a is to force you to learn about Linux, which is what I did. Um, you should really look into using either Debian or installing Arch, vanilla Arch, as that teaches you a lot about the system. It's not massively difficult to do. I know um, uh, installing a vanilla Arch Linux can be quite daunting for many people, but it need not be difficult. You can. I do have a video walking you through an Arch Linux install if you want to check that out on the on the channel, but it's really not that difficult and I think it's an amazing way for new Linux users to learn about their system and to set them on a path of knowing more and more about their system which would then enable them to fix any issues that may arise as they use the system and install more packages from different dis uh, sorry from different rep repositories or installing uh, programs software from online and the bonus of downloading a distribution like Debian or Arch is that they are by themselves they are quite they are server they are server operating systems they don't come with their own desktop environment which may sound like a bad thing but it's actually a good thing because when you choose to ins when you choose to install your desktop environment be it GNOME or Plasma KDE or XFCE or whatever it may be you can think of it as kind of sticking it on top of the operating system, you know? So you install Arch Linux, you're stuck with the TTY, you install XFCE as a package, and then voila, you have Arch Linux with the XFCE desktop environment. Whereas if you're downloading something like Ubuntu, which comes with GNOME, it's very it's woven into the operating system. Or maybe a better example would be Pop OS. If you wanted to use Pop OS but you didn't like the GNOME desktop environment, good luck trying to uninstall it because it's so woven into the operating system. You'd end up breaking core utilities within it, and it would be unusable. It it, it does get rid of the choice of being able to choose what desktop environment you want. Whereas, like I've said with Arch and Debian, it's kind of just you know, mix and match, you know, or you don't like XFCE, well simply just uninstall the package and reinstall a different one. It's as simple as that, which is how it should be, and I think that's how, I think that's the impression people should get when they use Linux, which is why I personally think new Linux users should ignore these videos telling them which beginner distros are, quote, the best, and they should bite the bullet and install Debian or Arc, learn about their system, 
and use that. I mean, even if you're not confident enough installing Arch Linux, you know, that's fine. It took me it took me goddamn nearly a year to learn how to install Arch Linux and to wrap my head around it. So you just install Debian, you know. Debian comes with a GUI installer, so you can navigate through this through the system nicely. And you can also choose what type of desktop environment you want straight out of the box. You know, there's no different ISOs to install or anything like that. It just comes with the installer. And then you have access to Debian stability, Debian packages. You know, it's just a stable system that people from Windows are... I think, I think that's actually one major roadblock between people on Windows that want to switch over to Linux, is the, the apparent lack of that stability that they get. They get the impression that Linux requires you to be a, a power user and to know absolutely everything that's going on in your system, when really it, it would be good if you knew everything that was going on in your system, but for new users that can take a long time to process, that can take a long time to learn about all the different programs and all the different utilities you need to know about and use in order to learn about your system and able to understand what goes on on your system. So I think installing Debian and getting access to that stability while also being made to install utilities on top of that system and not just being given a ready-made meal, for example, and saying, oh, there you go, it just works. I mean, something like Linux Mint does just work, but you don't learn anything about it. You can go using Linux Mint or Ubuntu without ever going into the terminal, you know, and you can do that. But I think that kind of defeats the purpose of Linux. Using Linux is to use the terminal, it's to know about your system. That's why I chose to use Linux, because I'm interested in using the system. I'm not interested in using Linux as a, a base desktop, I mean it's nice using it as that, but it's also a good learning exercise. Even if you if you learn about your Debian system and want to go on further, you can install Arch, you can even install something like Gentoo or God forbid OpenBSD, you know, you have that choice, you can install as many ones as you want, and learn as much as you want, as much as you can. There's a lot of stuff to learn about Linux. But yeah, that's about it, to be honest, for this one. Um, I just wanted to say that the only difference between the distributions is really the look and feel of it. it you could, if you had the know-how, make Linux Mint look exactly like, I don't know, Ubuntu if you wanted to, and they'd function the same. But um, yeah, install Debian or install Arch. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please like this video. It lets me know that it lets me know that you've actually enjoyed it. Have a good day, everyone. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.